cold start drivability problems. They can be difficult to diagnose and difficult to repair. The cold start problems we're going to discuss in this video are caused by carbon deposits on the intake valves. You'll learn how to inspect and clean the intake valves using two innovative new service tools, the borescope and the carbon blaster, available as a kit from Ford Parts and Service Division Rotunda under part number 014-00975. This particular cold start condition generally only exists when the vehicle is started for the first time of the day. Once the engine warms up, the vehicle runs fine. Ford Parts and Service Division has found that cold start complaints caused by intake valve deposits are most prevalent in three particular engines. 1988 to present 2.3 liter engines, 1988 to present 2.3 liter overhead cam engines, and 1988 to present 3.8 liter V6 naturally aspirated engines. When a customer brings in a vehicle complaining of a condition consisting of long crank times, poor cold start on initial startup, rough cold idle, stalling when the vehicle is placed in gear, and hesitation on acceleration, carbon deposits on the back side of the intake valves could be the cause. These symptoms are most prevalent at temperatures of 40 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Your first step is to check the engine control electrical wiring and vacuum lines. Then run through the usual engine performance diagnostic tests as outlined in the Ford Powertrain Emissions Control Diagnosis Manual. If everything checks out normal, it's time to inspect the intake valves. There are two primary causes for these cold start drivability symptoms. The first is carbon deposits on the backside of intake valves caused by gasolines without sufficient detergent additives. The type and effectiveness of the detergent additives used by different gasoline manufacturers varies a great deal. OASIS messages 9000 through 9023 provide a list of gasoline brands which advertise having detergent additives for preventing intake system deposits. Please suggest to your customers that they stick to these brands of gasoline. The other factor which increases the occurrence of these cold start symptoms is the use of gasoline with poor volatility or a low rate of vaporization. Typically, high octane gasolines have a lower rate of vaporization than regular grades. Many motorists use high octane gasoline because they think that it has more power, is cleaner burning, or has a higher energy content than regular gasoline. This is a common fallacy. High octane or premium gasoline does not provide more power than regular gasoline unless your engine was designed for its use. A higher octane rating only means that the gasoline is more resistant to causing spark knock. Most of the gasolines on the Oasis list have the same amount of detergents in premium and regular grade. Only high performance cars with engines which have higher compression ratios require a premium fuel with an octane rating higher than 87. Please advise your customers that none of the three engines which we're discussing here, the 2.3 liter, the 2.3 liter overhead cam, or the naturally aspirated 3.8 liter V6 should be using premium gasoline. When the engine is cold, the carbon deposits, which are dry and porous, absorb some of the gasoline being injected into the intake port. Fuel that has poor vaporization characteristics can further complicate this occurrence. The result is insufficient fuel vapor for proper combustion. This lean condition is what causes the hard start, rough idle, and stalling. Once the engine heats up and the carbon deposits become saturated, they no longer absorb the injected fuel, and the engine runs fine. In addition, the heat generated by the engine helps the fuel vaporize better. The carbon deposits won't dry again until the engine completely cools down. This is why the condition generally exists only upon initial cold startup. The cold start condition won't be resolved until the carbon deposits are completely removed from the intake valves. Until now, valve inspection required partial disassembly of the engine. Using the borescope is a quick and much more effective method for inspecting the intake valves. Let's take a look at this useful new tool. The borescope is a precision optical device, very similar to the equipment surgeons use to perform arthroscopic surgery. Its parts include a light source, a light guide cable, a view arm with a pivoting end, an eyepiece, and battery connections. 
It also features a variable light intensity adjuster. The on-off switch is located at the end of the light source housing. The kit also includes two different viewing probes and a mirror sheath. The probes attach easily to the bore scope. Simply push the probe into the end of the viewing arm until it clicks into position. The longer probe provides a typical forward view as shown here. The shorter probe allows you to look at objects at a 90 degree angle. The shorter probe can be rotated 360 degrees on the bore scope to allow right angle viewing in all directions. The mirror sheath slides over the longer probe and allows you to look at objects at a 90 degree angle. When installing the mirror sheath, be sure to align the sheath guide pin with the borescope's long probe. The mirror sheath allows you to convert the long probe to view at a 90 degree angle. The borescope's power supply cable connects to the vehicle's battery. There are several handling precautions you should be aware of when using the borescope. Use care when handling the borescope. Avoid unnecessary force, strain, or impacts. Never lay the borescope across the terminals of a battery. The borescope light bulb, which is rather expensive to replace, is a 50-watt, 12-volt bulb. It cannot handle the 13 or 14 volts typically output by a vehicle's charging system. Operating the borescope with the engine running will cause the bulb to burn out. For this reason, don't connect the borescope to the battery with the engine running or with the battery connected to a charger. Don't use the borescope in the presence of flammable gases. The borescope's lenses magnify light. If you are using it for other applications, don't look into the eyepiece if the light level is uncomfortably high. Also, never look directly into the light output from the light source, light guide cable, or probe end. This high intensity light could damage your eye. Finally, to avoid engine or tool damage, never crank the engine with the borescope in the cylinder. Keep the borescope clean using a clean soft cloth and a mild detergent solution. Be sure to remove all traces of the detergent when finished. Always store the borescope in its case when not in use. Replacement bulbs, O-rings, and probes are available through the Rotunda Equipment Program of the Ford Parts and Service Division. Now that you know something about the borescope, let's look at how to use it to inspect the intake valves. Connect the borescope's power supply cable to the vehicle's battery, attach the red clamp to the positive battery terminal, and attach the black clamp to an engine ground as far from the battery as possible. To avoid the possibility of sparking, do not clamp the borescope to the negative battery terminal. Then remove the spark plugs, since the valves are viewed through the spark plug holes. Inspect any two intake valves to determine if cleaning is required. Inspect the valves when they are in the fully open position. With the shorter probe attached to the borescope, turn on the lamp and insert the borescope into a spark plug hole to view the intake valves. If the valve is not fully open, you'll have to rotate the engine by hand to open the valves. Remember not to rotate the engine with the borescope in the cylinder. Take a good look at two open intake valves. Compare the appearance of the valves with the chart on page 7 of Ford Technical Service Bulletin number 9219, article number 3. The chart shows nine valves with different carbon deposit levels. If the valves you inspected look like numbers 1 through 7 on the chart, the valves must be cleaned using the carbon blaster. If the valves are clean, they will compare to numbers 8 and 9 on the chart, and intake valve deposits are not the cause of the vehicle's cold start condition. Now let's take a look at the carbon blaster. Consisting of a main unit and several components, the carbon blaster shoots a high-speed stream of finely crushed walnut shells at the intake valves and provides the most effective method for removing carbon deposits. The component parts include a foot valve and air hose, an air regulator, a discharge hose and two blast nozzles, a vacuum hose and universal adapter holder, and a pneumatic vacuum and bag. The blaster unit has three knobs, a fill run knob, an on off knob, and a blast clean air knob. 
The crushed walnut shells are stored in this container. Walnut shells are an ideal media for removing carbon deposits for two primary reasons. One, they are abrasive enough to remove the deposits, but not so abrasive that they damage engine parts. And two, should any residual shells that are not picked up by the vacuum be left in the engine, they will simply burn up when it is started. Many liquid cleaning solutions may partially remove intake valve carbon deposits and could solve the problem for a short period of time, but they do not remove all of the deposits, and the poor cold start condition will eventually return. The only Ford Engineering approved on-vehicle method for removing intake valve carbon deposits on the 2.3 liter, 2.3 liter overhead cam and the 3.8 liter naturally aspirated V6 engines under warranty is using the borescope and carbon blaster. Ford Motor Company recommends against using any liquid cleaning solutions to remove intake valve carbon deposits. Like the borescope, there are several precautions you need to be aware of when using the carbon blaster. Always use safety eyewear, glasses, or goggles when operating the carbon blaster. Follow the instructions that come with the carbon blaster kit very carefully. Always throw walnut shells away once they have been used. Do not reuse them. Never use lubricated shop air when operating the carbon blaster. And always drain the air compressor lines of any water. Always store the walnut shells in the storage container they came in. If left exposed to the atmosphere, the shells will absorb moisture, which could plug up the blaster. Before we can use the carbon blaster to clean the intake valves, we have to prepare the engine. First, relieve fuel system pressure and remove the upper intake manifold. Then, disconnect the fuel injector electrical connectors and remove the fuel rail and fuel injectors. Refer to the service manual for the specific vehicle you're working on for the correct procedures. The engine is now ready for the carbon blaster. Let's get the blaster set up to use. First, install the regulator on the blaster, and then the foot valve air hose on the regulator. Connect the discharge hose to the blaster, and the nozzle to the discharge hose. Connect a shop air hose to the foot valve. Position the foot pedal on the floor where you'll have easy access to it during the cleaning procedure. And place the carbon blaster close enough to the vehicle for the discharge hose to easily reach the engine. Connect a second shop air hose to the fitting on the pneumatic vacuum handle. Now attach the blaster's vacuum hose to the pneumatic vacuum. Position the vacuum hose over the manifold port of the valve to be cleaned. Slide the forked end of the universal adapter holder over the vacuum hose universal adapter. Then use a bolt to secure the adapter holder to the lower intake manifold. Now you're ready to clean the carbon deposits. Note the carbon blaster's vacuum universal adapter won't seal properly on 2.3 liter dual plug engine intake manifolds. On vehicles equipped with these engines, remove the vacuum hose and insert the pneumatic vacuum handle into the manifold port as shown here. The intake valves must be fully closed when they are being cleaned with the carbon blaster. Rotate the engine by hand to close each valve prior to cleaning. Use the borescope through each fuel injector port to verify that the valves are closed. The crushed walnut shells are loaded into the blaster through the metering chamber. Fill the chamber with shells and then turn the fill run knob to the fill position for approximately 15 seconds. The exact amount of shells needed to clean one valve are then drawn into the blaster. Turn the fill run knob back to the run position. This shell loading process must be done for every valve that is to be cleaned. Occasionally the carbon blaster may become clogged. To unclog it, perform the backflow procedure. Turn the on off knob to off the fill run knob to fill. After removing all media from the metering chamber, secure the blaster's top cover loosely using only the first latch position as shown here. This will allow the backblown air to escape. Attach a blowgun to a compressed air line and direct the airflow into the end of the blaster's nozzle. This should clear up any clogging which may be hampering the blaster's operation. 
To prevent equipment or engine damage, use only Rotunda-approved Walnut Blast Media number 014-00982. Do not use sand or other abrasives. The Rotunda Media has been prepared, graded, and sized specifically for this procedure. The use of any other material will result in blockage, damaging the carbon blaster and or the engine. To begin the cleaning process, make sure the blast clean air knob is in the blast position and turn the on-off knob to the on position. This lever on the vacuum handle activates the vacuum. Hold down the pneumatic vacuum handle with this ring. The nozzle flat is 180 degrees offset from the nozzle tip. This will indicate the direction of the blast stream. This rubber back shield adapter helps deflect any shells that may come back out of the injector port. Insert the discharge nozzle into one of the fuel injector holes. Remember, the valve to be cleaned must be fully closed. Then depress the foot valve to start the cleaning process. The cleaning operation should take one to two minutes per valve. Be sure to clean all around the valve by moving the nozzle around the stem as shown in this sectional view of an engine. When the procedure is finished, take your foot off the foot valve and turn the blast clean air knob to the clean position. Depress the foot valve again and the blaster will now discharge shop air to purge the valve chamber of walnut shells. They will be sucked up through the manifold port and into the pneumatic vacuum bag. Continue this cleanup step for about 20 seconds. Verify that valve cleaning was successful by inspecting the valve using the bore scope. Look through the fuel injector port to see the valve. If it compares favorably to the two clean valves shown in the chart in Ford TSB 9219, article number 3, the valve is clean. If the valve is still dirty, repeat the process. Now clean the remaining valves in the same way. Remember to use new walnut media for each valve. When all the valves are clean, use the vacuum to remove any residual media from the engine. Dispose of used walnut shells by emptying the pneumatic vacuum bag. Check for additional media or obstructions in the one-way flap valve. And be sure to remove any unused walnut shells from the carbon blaster and put them back in the storage container. Now, reassemble the engine, starting with the fuel rail and injectors. Install the injector electrical connectors. Install the upper intake manifold, including a new gasket, and torque the retaining bolts and nuts to the specifications listed in the service manual for that vehicle. And finally, install the spark plugs and spark plug wires. Remind the customer of the benefits of using good quality regular octane gasoline. Explain the intake valve deposit problem, its causes, and how it can be prevented in the future. Share with the customer the list of gasolines found in Oasis messages 9000 through 9023. With the borescope and carbon blaster, Ford Motor Company is confident that cold start complaints due to intake valve deposits will be more quickly diagnosed and repaired than ever before. This is more evidence that Ford's commitment to customer satisfaction is stronger than ever.